Hello right, guys, got a video here for you today on the Enships 9015 and what we're going to be doing in this one is enlarging the plenum. So to do that what we've got to do is drill out this hole in the back side of the front block of the 9015. This hole is where the valve return spring goes and it also houses the valve. The hole in the standard block is an 8mm hole and we're going to be taking out to 9.5mm. I chose 9.5mm because I measured all the holes in the block worked out where they intersected, then picked the largest diameter hole I was comfortable in drilling so as not to break through into anything that we didn't need to break through into. But that's all worked out and we're set up in the mill vise, nice and centred on the hole. And we're just going through with a couple drill bits and then we'll finish it off with a reamer. So the first size drill bit was just to remove most of the bulk material. The original hole, as I said earlier, is 8mm and we just went through with a 9mm drill bit the second drill was a 9.4mm drill, so taking off a little less material, but stepping closer to the final size, which we'll do with the reamer. And to give the reamer the best chance of producing a nice smooth surface finish, we're flooding the hole out with oil to firstly wash away any chips that may get stuck between the reamer flutes and the sides of the hole, and secondly to provide a little extra lubrication for the back edges of the reamer that are going through the already reamed hole. This is a 43mm long hole and we're not going to be reaming the last 3mm. What this does is as this is a blind hole, meaning that the hole is not a through hole, the chips have an area to accumulate in and they're less likely to get jammed in beside the reamer flutes and the side of the hole. But that's it done there and as you can see we've got a fairly nice surface finish in the hole itself. So we'll go back over to the bench and we'll explain exactly why we drilled this hole out. Right then, and that's the plenum all drilled out. So if we take a look at it on this side here, you see that we've got a nice smooth finish with the reamer in there. I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick that up, but it's nice and smooth in there. And if you look at it from that angle, you can just about see the breakthrough point in which the plenum chamber connects to the regulator chamber. So there that is there. Right then, so that's how we did it. I'll just give a very brief explanation as to why we did it. What we've done by enlarging the hole in the block is increase the plenum size. Now the plenum is the store of regulated air that's available to the back of the valve and the larger the plenum is, the more potential for power that you have. Now this is obviously a target gun so we're not interested in getting 100 or so foot pounds. We just need 12 in order to keep it nice and under the sub 12 foot pound limit. However, with the plenum size of this block being so small, the rifle was actually struggling to produce 12 pounds. We had to use excessive amounts of hammer spring in order to keep the valve open for longer to achieve the power that we wanted. This was wasting air and causing the rifle to behave quite inefficiently. And the two main benefits of drilling the plenum out and doing all this work is that number one, we should hopefully get a more efficient rifle as there's going to be more air available to the back of the valve and therefore we should be able to use less hammer spring to get the same amount of power. And number two is in regards to the hammer spring itself. Because we will be able to undo the hammer spring a little, the rifle should feel a little more relaxed and with a little bit of luck hopefully it should operate a little smoother. Another little benefit of this mod is that we may be able to reduce the regulator pressure a little. At the moment the reg is sort of set around the 100 bar mark I guess. I haven't actually made a reg tester for this yet, but if we fill the rifle up to 200 bar, shoot it all the way down to 100, that's when the power starts to drop. So I'm guessing that the regulator in this rifle is currently set around 100 bar. With the plenum now drilled out, we might be able to drop that a little to around the 90, 85 bar mark. That'll give us an extra few shots and may even put the regulator in a better place. And very briefly, just to those of you who are interested, the original plenum size was around 4 cc's of air and when we drilled it out we increased that to roughly 5 cc's of air. So still a fairly small plenum size although hopefully we'll still see some benefits from enlarging it. With that all said and done what we'll do now is I'll build the rifle back up, I'll do some tests and I'll report back to you what our findings were. And here's the rifle all put back together. So. We've given the rifle a good test over the weekend. We did manage to get it up the range and put it through its paces. And I'm really quite happy with the results. 
So this is my bench rest gun obviously and we did test it over the weekend at 25 meter bench rest. I will say that there wasn't like a dramatic improvement in scores but once you looked at the average there was a slight improvement between the drilled out plenum and a standard plenum. As well as shooting the rifle we did also put it over the chrono and make sure everything was all right there. I'll put both the graphs on screen now so you can see the before and after. And as you can see from the graphs there, we did average an extra 15 or 20 shots per fill. So that's filling up to 200 bar and then shooting all the way down to around 100 bar. We didn't see a big improvement in consistency or anything like that. Although saying that the rifle is still incredibly consistent over the full shot string. And that's all the numbers out of the way. So what we'll do now is just briefly talk through some things that we noticed when we actually did the plenum itself. So, the first thing we did have to do is lock tight the little hammer spring adjuster here. So if we take a look at the back here, the one thing we did have to do after adjusting the power was put a small amount of blue Loctite around this threaded portion of the hammer spring adjuster. What was happening was as we was firing the rifle, the hammer spring adjuster came loose and was causing the power to fluctuate quite rapidly up and down. Now there is a small piece of Delrin banged into the threads and that's supposed to cause a little bit of resistance between the threads and stop them from rotating under vibration. Although after undoing the hammer spring adjuster at one and a half turns, the Delrin thing was quite loose in there and not causing the resistance to the threads that it needed so you could actually turn it quite easily by hand. But luckily the fix was nice and easy, just a small amount of blue Loctite and that stopped the hammer spring adjuster from coming loose anymore. Apart from that though, the actual operation of the rifle itself does feel smoother since we've drilled out the plenum. There's really no resistance to the cocking. It wasn't difficult to cock before, but now it feels noticeably looser. And also, when there's a pellet in there and the rifle isn't on sort of trigger training mode, the recoil or the sort of aftershot vibration through the action is noticeably less. I believe that's obviously because the hammer spring adjuster is a little further out so there's not as much hammer spring tension on the back of the hammer. So the hammer's flying a little slower as it hits the valve. So some of the aftershot vibrations have been taken out and overall it does feel like a smoother gun to operate and to use. Right then, that's going to about do it for this one. That's the plenum on the 9015 all drilled out. So that's another job checked off the checklist. I still am going to experiment with putting a regulator in the cylinder. That project hasn't gone away. As the actual plenum size in the block itself is still fairly small. But that's going to about do it for this one guys. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.